my dear brothers and sisters i am very happy to greet you on this goodness tv which i am told will be beamed to the audience it's a really a divine center where the presence of god is felt by so many people by so many who are in crisis so so many who would like to bless and thank god for the good things that god has done in their life and if god is touching you and if god is if you feel the presence of god in your life not only are you blessed kindly pass this blessing this experience to the others also i am happy to speak to you about the advent season you know life is waiting we are used to waiting how many times we have to wait for someone who is coming there are some others who go to the bus stand the railway station the airport because someone is coming there are so many who wait at home for their children for the husband for the father mother to come and so life is for a great part a waiting and today as we speak of advent which is a technical word that we wait for the lord it's a very special experience of course there are many who think advent is a preparation for christmas on in a small way yes we have to prepare for christmas we have to send the cards we have to prepare the sweets we have to make our phone calls greetings we have to prepare our cribs and so many other things in the western world you know christmas is no longer a religious feast it's a secular it's a commercial feast but then for us christians it's something special and as i said perhaps a little way we can say we are preparing or we are waiting for jesus to be born that christmas event makes us all happy but that's not the only thing that advent is about advent is about waiting for god in your life expecting the lord to enter in your life and that is why the readings of the first sunday of advent are very very meaningful and let us go to the mountain of the lord says prophet isaiah i do not know where i will meet the lord is it the mountain is it the valley is it the river side is it my own home or the street that i will meet the lord but the lord is waiting for me and that is why he comes as a messenger of peace a messenger of peace and it's worth waiting for him you know there is this longing for peace in every one of us peace in our families peace in our society peace in our country and if i am sure that someone is going to come today to announce this peace to me to my family i will surely wait for him so therefore prophet isaiah says we are waiting for this messiah you know the book of isaiah was written much before jesus was born and much before jesus was expected and therefore that sense of expectation which the prophets created it's a beautiful expression and it's not only that isaiah promises that those who wait will not be disappointed rather he will be a, mess- a messenger a harbinger of peace who will convert even the normal things even the dangerous things into things of use the example that is given here is he will adjudicate before the people he will hammer swords into plowshares and spears into sickles the sickles are used for by a farmer in order to grow vegetables to cultivate the ground and that is important uh, we do not need spears we don't need swords and therefore the first message that the prophet gives us that we have to wait for this messenger this messiah in our life and that is our waiting and secondly my dear brothers and sisters 
Do you know when Jesus passed through our life? Surely when we wait for him. But many a times our wait, our waiting seems to be meaningless. You know, I was going somewhere by flight and they first they told me the flight was delayed a little and I waited. It was one hour, two hours, three hours and the flight was cancelled. I was disappointed. Perhaps many a time it does occur to us that we are waiting, we are waiting and nothing happens. Nobody comes. But it's not so with us Christians. Our Advent is a season of hope where we wait with affection, with expectation, with longing for someone who is coming. And that is why when will Jesus come into our lives? There are two ways or two times perhaps Jesus will enter. Jesus will enter now into my life when I need him or perhaps when he needs me he comes and awakes me. And the second coming of his is surely at the last time, at the last end of my life when he will come to judge among the living and the dead. So first of all let us see when Jesus enters into our life today and tomorrow. You are praying, you are saying your prayers, you are reading the word of God, you are listening to so many experiences or perhaps breaking of the word by these prophets, by these priests who are coming to tell you. There are so many who are giving experiences and something touches you, something tickles you, something pricks you, something touches you because you are hungering for something. You need some medicine which will cure you of this. And that is the time God enters. And God enters in the form of the medicine, of the person who gives you advice, of the perhaps the thing that you require. And these are the ways that Jesus enters into your life. You know, the gospel today speaks about the times, the gospel of Matthew speaks about Noah's time, you know, the floods, Kerala is having a lot of floods, Karnataka is having floods and many a time we uh, were not expecting these floods. We expected the rain to be normal and therefore we were not prepared for it. And so was the time of the big floods of Noah, at the time of Noah. And the gospel tells us that Noah's time people were eating and drinking and marrying and doing everything else because they were not expecting the floods as such. But the floods come and awake them. And as Noah gets into the, that ark, as it were, which is a, a rocking boat, or a saviour, a salvation for all those people, perhaps in your life also, God will enter in order to save you, in order to warn you. And it's not only that. The Gospel also tells us that Son of Man will come when we do not know. And the example is given of a robber of a robber. The robber never gives a clue when he will enter your house, when he will rob you. And so many of us are getting robbed because we are not waiting, we are not expecting. And that is the way perhaps God will also enter through a shock treatment to you. But that could be an exceptional one. But Jesus comes into your life every day. Jesus is waiting for you, is longing for you. Many a time perhaps not that we are not to be disappointed, but our waiting has also a meaning. You know, Lazarus, Martha and Mary, when Jesus enters their house and Lazarus is dead, Martha complains to Jesus, where were you? My brother was dying, we sent word for you and you were out of range, you were out of touch, you were nowhere. And now you have come four days after the death of and Lazarus. According to Mary and Martha, Jesus was late. But Jesus was never late. Jesus was in time. Because for Jesus to come late is also to come in time, if we understand it. If we were to order Jesus, come now, come now, I am this problem, Jesus perhaps doesn't oblige us. Jesus comes when you have hunger. Jesus comes when you have thirst. And if you don't have that hunger, if you don't have the thirst for God, God cannot enter your life. 
Finally, my dear brothers and sisters, St. Paul has also a very powerful message in the letter of the Romans on the first Sunday of Advent. And St. Paul says, you know the time has come and therefore wake up. The word that is used twice by St. Paul in this reading is wake up. Get up. You can't afford to waste time because the, the sun is setting and the, the, uh, the rays are opening up and therefore you have to get up. You are a man of the word that is used darkness. You are not a man of darkness. You do not do your things in darkness but you are a man of light. You are a man who not only exhibits yourself to the others and the others surely will see in you certain things that, mark, that are marked by God. And therefore St. Paul says, wake up. Wake up. Don't take time for granted. Waiting is surely long, but waiting has an end. Where will it end? When will it end? How will it end? God alone knows. I have just been thinking that God works through many ways and God works through little people in all simplicity and humility and therefore it's important for us to recognize the signs, the symbols of God in our life. I was just glancing through this scripture that is before me, for the precept is a lamp and the teaching is a light. You know what's a light? It shines. And in darkness, with one light, you are so courageous. And therefore, perhaps in our life, we need many lights in our life. When we are in problem, when we are in struggle, when we are despondent, when we are in doubt, perhaps when someone has failed us or even cheated us, we need some lights in our life. The Word of God is a lamp for my, my steps. And in that sense, everything that God speaks through this word, God speaks through his prophets, perhaps a revelation for us. I pray for you very specially that every occasion that you get to open the word of God, to savor and also to swallow these words, not only in your throat, in your mind, but more in your heart. God speaks through you. God speaks through events. God speaks through incidents, perhaps even accidents. Because God is great. And therefore never lose hope. On the other hand, the little confidence that God has given you, the little love of God that you experience, and the peace that you enjoy, try to communicate to others. Mother Teresa used to say, Peace starts with a smile and therefore my dear brothers and sisters the little smile that you exchange between yourself in your family among your friends perhaps will be a little lamp a little light that will brighten the peace atmosphere wherever you are therefore ask the lord for this grace for this hunger for this thirst for this meaningful waiting so that you can experience the love of god the joy of the Lord and be a symbol, a sign, an instrument of peace and hope for everybody. I wish you well. Please pray for me also. I like very much these retreats that are conducted here. Many people from Bangalore also have been going there and uh, there was a group also who came to ask me for blessings as they go there. And I told them and as I will tell you also, pray for me very specially also. I am in need of your prayers. God bless you.